Councilor Backer. Here. Councilor Frick. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Mole. Present. Councilor Roberts. Present. Councilor Swift Kayata. Here. Student Representative Skylar Armstrong. Yes. Student Representative Brianne Flynn. Yes. Manager McGovern. And the next order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Reports and correspondence. Um, are there any reports or correspondence? Councillor Fritz. I just wanted to mention that uh, we're going to be having an orientation on January 28th, which is a Wednesday at 7 o'clock, for people who are serving on uh, town uh, boards and commissions. And. Uh, and it's not just an orientation for new members. We're really encouraging all members of boards and commissions to come and uh, meet other people who are volunteering and serving the town. Any other reports? Okay. I'll just mention that um, there was a building committee meeting uh, this month for the new high school and uh, kindergarten renovations and new construction and that seems to be going along um, on schedule. We expect that uh, the school department will put bids out for the high school sometime this spring and we'll be retaining a construction manager as well on the high school project uh, sometime this spring. So um, for those that are interested that seems to be moving along. And um, Madam, Madam Chair, yes. I just thought of something that I should mention. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to mention that the uh, budget cycle is beginning for the municipal and school budgets, and we are having um, an opportunity this evening for citizens to comment on their priorities for the budget, for the town, and for the schools. But we are also d uh, don't want to limit input just to this evening. If anyone couldn't make it here tonight or for whatever reason, um, would like to comment um, our budget meetings, our, our meetings of the Finance Committee, which is a meeting of the Town Council as a whole, meeting as a committee. And the meetings uh, will, are going to be public. And also anyone who wants to send an email or write letters or whatever um, <coughs> to give input on what their priorities for the town um, are going to are, uh, it's going to be a very challenging budget year given the uh, cuts in state aid for education that we anticipate and given um, a lot of other things that are going on in town. So I encourage citizens to become involved in the process as much as they can. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other reports and correspondence? Okay. The next item on the agenda is the town manager's report. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, two quick items. At the council meetings in December, the council authorized two agreements uh, that I just wish to update you on. The first was you authorized the purchase and sale agreement for the sale of 316 Ocean House Road, Dwight's Development, LLC, the, the former service station lot next to the town hall. Uh, that agreement was in fact signed and the, uh, we're now holding the first part of the escrow that's provided in that agreement. Uh, secondly, you authorized me to sign an interlocal agreement with the city of South Portland uh, to have cooperative fire responses uh, with the Willard Fire Company and with the Engine One Company. I'm very pleased that the South Fulton City Council also approved uh, that and authorized Jeff Jordan, my counterpart in South Portland, to sign it. And it, it, was, it was very fortunate that last week, I, I don't remember exactly which evening, but it was one of those evenings when we had a snow squall, uh, Jeff and I uh, both attended uh, a joint dinner meeting down at the Willard Company, actually their annual meeting. Uh, at which they invite the South Fulton City Council uh, and, uh, you know, various other folks, the two chiefs were there, uh, as well as a lot of members of both companies. And at that meeting, we actually signed the interlocal agreement. And Jeff Jordan also presented to Engine One Company uh, and to their captain, Jim Wilson, uh, these nice crystal, uh, what do you call those things, Jack? The paperweight type uh, of yeah, the big recognition? Paper yeah, the, the big paperweight light 
recognitions that the city of South Portland does. Since you know, there were some members there, and Captain Wilson was not able to be there, uh, Kevin Guimond, who's the fire chief in South Portland, right at this very moment is at the meeting of the Engine One Company uh, down at the Cape Cottage Fire Station presenting uh, those, uh, those recognitions uh, to the company and to uh, Captain Wilson. So uh, I think the, the, those things are both good news that there's been progress on both and particularly want to indicate you know, my appreciation again of the work of the Engine One Company and the Willard Company in South Portland and the, the assistance of the two chiefs uh, and all the other folks uh, who were involved in that. So, thank you. Anything else? The next item on the agenda is the minutes of our regular December meeting and the minutes of the special meeting that we had in December regarding Jordan Way, and we probably ought to take those up separately. Is there a motion? I move acceptance of the minutes of December 8th. Second. All in, any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. And is there another motion? I move acceptance of the minutes for December 15th, the special meeting. Any discussion? All in favor? 7-0. Actually, I'll abstain from the approval of the second minute since I was not in attendance at that meeting. And um, this is the time in our um, meeting when um, we invite citizens to who wish to discuss any item not on the agenda. Now is your opportunity. Um, we will go from this immediately to the citizens' discussion of the budget, um, which, as uh, Councilor Swift Teada indicated, is an opportunity for citizens to provide input to us before we begin the budget process. So, um, if there's anyone here to speak on items not on the agenda and not on the budget, seeing none, we will. Oops. I'm sorry. And Skylar and I just wanted to take this minute to thank you for opening up Jordan Way and dealing with the traffic issue that we brought up last minute and doing it so promptly. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Moll. Yes, I just wanted to say that I know that there are three boy scouts from Group 30 sitting in the office tonight. And I was wondering if they wanted to come up to the podium and tell us what merit badge they're working on tonight. This is a good opportunity. I guess. I guess they're being shy tonight. <laughs> Must be one of the citizenship merit badges. Okay. I understand they're working on citizenship in the community, so welcome. We don't always put citizens on a spot like that. <laughs> okay. And uh, now I will open up the citizens forum um, on the budget process. So if anyone would like to um, discuss the budget, great time to do it. But as uh, Councillor swift Cata said, we will also have a number of work sessions. I'll announce those dates at the end of the meeting, so there's going to be ample opportunity starting tonight for citizen input. So if you could uh, state your name and address. Right. Rebecca Millett, 12 Lombard Road. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak about the uh, upcoming town um, budget process. Um, as you mentioned earlier, we are again facing a very challenging time, and I am appreciative of the Council's sensitivity to the financial pressures placed on our town residents. I am also very appreciative of our town's deep commitment to the schools, as is evidenced by the recent um, overwhelming support for the school bond vote. Uh, while no one likes to see taxes increase, it is clear as a community we will do what is necessary to keep our schools strong. And I hope you'll keep that in mind as we move forward with the budget. I also would like to ask you to proactively work with school and town administrators, other towns and cities that are suffering as we are, and state legislators to get the state school funding formula changed. It's clear that the state funding process works against Cape Elizabeth. 
and many other communities in the area. <clears throat> it seems like there may be some momentum gathering to have these changes made. And it's clearly in our best interest that they are expedited quickly. I'd like to know if the council and or any other town administrators are currently working with anyone around this issue. Thank you. I'll, I'll respond to that because I'm um, on the um, Maine Municipal Association Legislative Committee and uh, I know Councillor Swiftcat is on the MMA Executive Committee and I would say that the school funding formula has certainly been the chief focus of the work I've done in the last three years and I've had many trips to Augusta. Um, unfortunately, um, state legislators have not been terribly sensitive to the concerns of local government, um, but we'll continue to try. Um, and, you know, I, I think that the legislature is going to look at it more seriously this year, but it's anybody's guess what will happen. Um, there's just not a lot of support for, it's not that there isn't a lot of support for education. I think there is in the abstract, but there's so much pressure in Augusta or other programs that local school funding has not been a priority. But we'll continue to try and make it that way. <laughs> um, if, if I could comment too, um, as uh, Chairman Lynch said, I'm on the executive committee of the Maine Municipal Association and I know the MMA has worked very hard um, over the past year um, at first to get 1A passed and 1A was the winner in Cape Elizabeth, um, Cape citizens understood that it would have vastly improved school funding for our community. Um, unfortunately, 1A did not pass outright and will be up again for um, an up or down vote in June. Um, I would encourage citizens uh, to learn about the impact that the uh, passage or non-passage of this tax reform measure in June will have on our community. 1A, if it had passed um, a couple months ago, we would be looking at a very different budget situation in Cape Elizabeth. As it is, we are now facing up to a $700,000 cut in state aid for education versus last year, which is just an enormous amount of money for the property taxpayers to try to pick up, given all the other um, worthy programs and good work that the school department does um, and also given the pressures that we will have um, to uh, finance the, the new school building which the voters did overwhelmingly support and therefore um, are, are definitely a, um, a good thing and um, I just want to encourage citizens to please get involved um, and talk to your state legislators because this is a critical issue for Cape Elizabeth it's going to have real big dollar impacts on our community. So I, I thank you for bringing this up at this meeting because it, it's probably one of the single biggest factors affecting this year's budget for us and future budgets. Thank you. Are there uh, other citizens? I, I, I think probably we should. Well, just one comment I would like to clarify, though, if I might. Okay. And that was that uh, the legislators have not been able to do much in Augusta, but. Our own legislators have worked extremely hard on this issue over the years, and they're fighting an uphill battle because of the number of communities that would lose by capable of gaining more. And I don't want the impression that our legislators, any of them, have not been working their tails off trying to get additional funding for this part of the state. Are there other citizens who would like to discuss the budget? I'm Mary Townsend um, from Five Pearl Street. And I didn't prepare a statement. I wasn't really prepared to speak, but um, what Councillor Swift Kayata um, brought to mind to me is just the importance of getting the information to the public. And if we can just keep the lines of communication open throughout the budgetary process, I think it will be helpful um, for the school community to um, get the information out to the supporters, all of the supporters that we've found um, 
supported the school building. So um, if we could just keep the lines of communication open and um, whether it's using the website or however you decide to do that, I think that would be very helpful. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak? At this time, we are going to, I think we have this on the agenda, but we're going to have the town manager do a report on some benchmarks, which he did. Uh, we had a joint budget meeting a week ago with the school board and the town council. It was extremely um, helpful, I think, for both bodies to understand the pressures and the challenges and the town manager had presented some information and we've asked him to do that again tonight because it was um, very informative and I think the citizens of Cape Elizabeth will find it useful as we look at the budget. So I will turn it over to the manager. Now it's off. There it goes. Okay. You can see how well rehearsed this one is. She'll get packets come in handy. This is a presentation that I'm referring to as responsible, responsive local government. And really what I see is the need in all the budget decisions that we be responsible, and that's responsible in taking, making sure that needs are taken care of. It's also being responsible in recognizing the issues of individual taxpayers in the community. Also the need, my desire to continue to be responsive to citizens when they have needs, the students as they have needs, and everyone that has expectations from local government. I'd like to begin by really looking at, in a macro sense, where we are uh, as we begin the budget. I think it's important to sort of do a a scan of the community. And first, it's important to look at some key economic factors. First, the consumer price index. For the last 12 month period that has been reported, this is a, a nationwide statistic, is 1.6%. Personal income growth in Maine over the last 12 months through the third quarter of 1983 was up 0.9%, but we, we, that's a statewide figure. We don't know what Cumberland County figures out. Uh, unemployment in Maine in November was at 4.9 percent. President Bush has told us of the great increases in the uh, gross domestic product and as a result of the tax cuts, uh, how much uh, the economy's got to, to go again, 8.2 percent. We all know that home values are up. Uh, mortgage rates, I don't know what they are compared to a year ago, but you know they're still relatively low from uh, historic census. Uh, most of us have looked at our December 31 statements. They look a little bit better than they did a year ago. Uh, we own the mutual funds, retirement funds. Another issue is that folks also have a lot of credit card balances. And I sense that Cape Elizabeth is no different than anywhere else. Uh, this particular chart, and I know the, the front is, is cut off. Again, at the beginning of budget process, we get support to look at where we stand compared to some of our uh, neighboring communities. What this chart shows is something called the full value tax rate. What a full value tax rate does is compares on an equalized basis the valuation for each community. For example, it, it just has nothing to do with our revaluation. It shows that, for example, if you had a $200,000 home in Cape Elizabeth, a $200,000 home in Falmouth, it, it's all equalized. So the, these truly are comparable. It has nothing to do with revaluation. The state determines the state valuation, and this is divided by the tax commitment that was made. In this case, the tax commitment for 2002, 2003, and it's the state valuation for 2003. And as you can see, amongst, and I know it's difficult to read this, if you look at the coastal communities in Cumberland County, from Cape Elizabeth to Scarborough, and then you add in Westbrook and Gore, 
uh, everyone else in Wyndham, everyone else along the coast. Amongst these communities, Cape Elizabeth taxpayers are paying the lowest full value tax rate in Cumberland County. Uh, Cumberland is missing there, we've got the data later, that's at 19. So Cumberland, you know, would still would be between South Fulton and Falmouth. Cape Elizabeth citizens are paying the lowest full value tax rate amongst the communities we usually compare ourselves to, and we're at 86% of the average for these communities. I think it's, you know, it's something that in, you know, in most respects we should be very proud of. If you look at non-school full value tax rates, this would be in Cape Elizabeth for what we pay to the county, for all our municipal services, as well as for community services. Cape Elizabeth, again, out of these 12 communities, has the lowest full value tax rate. It's $4.05 per thousand. If you take our neighboring community of South Portland, $8.31, they are more than double what those folks are paying for municipal services from their local tax bill. In other words, if Cape Elizabeth, a $200,000 home, would be paying $810, if that same $200,000 home in South Portland would be paying $1,600 a year for local services. You might wonder, you know, why is this true? And again, I, I should mention Cumberland again is missing. Cumberland does fall between Cape Elizabeth and Town. Including Cumberland, we are at 63% of the average. So, you know, we're, we're just, we're really low compared to those other communities in terms of full value tax rates. I, one thing I would like to mention, we've heard a lot of discussion about our, our police station, about having redone schools, community services, buildings, the public, the, the new garage over there. This includes all of that. This is, this is not, you know, despite all of that spending that was done, those investments, we're still the lowest, and we're still 10% lower than Falmouth, more than 5% lower than Cumberland, and Scarborough, our neighboring community, even after doing all that, we're at a, we're, you know, it's, it's a four to six spread, uh, you know, rather significant. And what about schools? This is the school full value tax rate. As you can see, Cape Elizabeth is in the middle. And again, full value tax rate, this reflects how much is being raised from local sources. You know, if you look at Westbrook and Gorham, for instance, or even Falmouth and Yarmouth. Falmouth just built a new high school, but tremendous support from the state in terms of debt service. Gorham and Westbrook get tremendous amount more in state subsidies. Those, those are higher than us. You know, ours reflect a very low amount that we receive from the state as well. If we receive a lot more from the state, you know, we could come further down, further down that list. So, you know, it, that's, it, that's an additional consideration when looking at this whole value tax rate. This is even with the rather poor way we're treated by the legislature for spending for schools, but still in the middle of these, uh, these communities. How is it that we're as low as we are? This, this, a lot of numbers on a page, and I apologize for that. But this looks at per capita spending. This is from a Maine Municipal Association fiscal survey done for what they call fiscal 02. It was issued about a year ago. So it was all, all the same comparable communities, although in some cases data was unavailable. That's why it's, it's always it, it's eight communities instead of four. Uh, and this is dividing the spending by the 2000 census. It's not estimated population, it's exact population as of April 1, 2000. Municipal administration, this includes uh, the, the tax office, the clerk, uh, it also includes legal, it includes a few other things. We're eight out of the eight communities. We spent the lowest per capita of eight communities. And I have, it, there's a report that lists what the eight communities are. Public safety per capita, this is police, fire, and rescue. We're eight of eight. We're eight of eight in fire department, and we're eighth of eight in rescue. In police, we're a little bit higher, but the police grouping tends to be very close together. 
Public Works and Solid Waste per capita with this abate a little bit higher. We tried to figure out why we were looking at it in the solid waste area, the communities that spend less than us. I believe three or four of them, and maybe all four, have paid per bag for solid waste. You know, they're, they're not, they have significantly reduced their volume of trash going to regional waste systems because as a result of pay per bag, they're recycling a lot more. General assistance, this is local welfare. Again, eight, eight of eight. Parks and recreation per capita. We spend more on parks and recreation than we do on public works and solid waste on a per capita basis. However, this does include not only community services in Fort William, it includes the swimming pool, the fitness center, and all, all of our different park lands. And we also have, that this doesn't show it, the highest revenue per capita for parks and recreation. But even when you include the revenue with seconds out of date, and I think you know that reflects the priority that citizens have generally shown in this community for parks and recreation. Library per capita with third of eight, again, we're on the higher side there. And education on a per capita basis this is not spending per pupil, this is spending per capita, how much we spend for each and every citizen in Cape Elizabeth. We're right smack in the middle, fourth of eight. And this is total spending. This is irregardless of, of other revenues, of state subsidies, and that area. This is, all of these are total spending, they're not net out. So you can see the fact that we're not spending, there's a lot of reasons why we're showing up 12, 12 of those different tax rates. We also, we spent a lot of money on the last few years, as I mentioned, on some of the big buildings, the big improvements. Uh, back over 10 or 11 million dollars. What we haven't been spending money on is the, the daily or annual upkeep of roads. We should be spending 500,000 annually. We've been spending a little over 300,000 annually. And this also, this capital improvement budget includes everything from police cruiser replacement mm -hmm. to replacing dump trucks, computers, building repair, uh, improvement. We're spending $70,000 less, almost, yeah, about 70000 less than we were spending back in 1999. And even back in 99, it showed that we should have been spending a million dollars a year. Every one of those years, we should have been spending a million dollars a year. And so that the five-year period of capital improvement plan, over the next five years, we should be spending an average of about $1.2 million. And that is not the new program. It, it's simply taking care of our existing buildings, and replacing existing equipment, radar units, and you know, I think everyone remembers the the voting day that we had in November, where you know folks had to wait in line an average of a half an hour uh, or longer. I think did anyone here not wait a half hour to put their ballot in the machine? I think everyone waited a half hour. You look at that times four thousand people. That is two thousand hours. If you value people's time at a small amount of ten dollars per hour, that's twenty thousand dollars worth of folks' time we took because we didn't invest in a voting machine, and that was only one election. And those are the type of things that begin to happen if you don't invest in replacing equipment in your infrastructure. Salaries, I think, are also a factor as we look at why we might have a lower full value tax rate than other communities. Again. The, you can see the comparable communities there on the right. This case is only seven. Uh, we really try to look at three ports missing, and we really pr try to look at communities that you know we generally most care ourselves in Cape Elizabeth. And if, if you look, for example, the planners, the fire chief, the public works director, these are all individuals who have worked in Cape Elizabeth for over 10 years, all recognized statewide, if not in Phil case, uh, Phil Magoogler's case, nationally as is about to pop in their field, and we're paying, the Cape Elizabeth is paying below the average for these communities. And, you know, and if we're, I think for you know, all our different positions, if we're expecting above average performance, which I think the citizens of Cape Elizabeth expect, I think we need to look long term of how we're paying some of these positions. There's a few positions, the assessor, for example, is fairly new to Cape Elizabeth, although he's worked, I think he's met everyone in Cape Elizabeth in the last year. Uh, and the, the deputy clerk is really new to her position. But you know, even then, when you, when you, when you look at wages 
when you have those newer employees, you can see we do stop them. For example, the deputy clerk is at 86% of the average. When newer folks come in, we try to stop them at the lower end, but it takes money eventually to try to move them up close to the average. So where does this all go? This is the municipal budget that has nothing to do with the school budget. The base budget for the current year is about 7.3 million. This includes all of the municipal departments, the debt service, the capital improvement plan, uh, the pool does not include community services, it includes the fitness center, it does include the fitness center. Increase in wages and salaries alone, that's actually about 3%. Uh, that takes about 100,000. Health insurance premium, with that, a number of employees have changed their marital status, their family status this last year. The premium is only up, uh, the, the rate is only up about 11%, but we're, we're finding these other factors. Uh, we're pumped up. The capital budget, I mentioned we're spending 620000 I think we need to spend at least 880 to begin to catch up as a down payment. That will take an extra 41% more in capital spending. If we don't do that, we're looking, you know, uh, you'll see in a minute the types of things we're spending on. We're, we're, not, we're not taking care of our buildings, we're not taking care of our roads, we're not replacing equipment we need to replace. Other adjustments, this is if you take the rest of the budget, everything from fuel to uh, computer maintenance to office supplies to sand and salt, 2.3% increase for all that. You know, fuel alone is up about 30%. Uh, that adds up to a 7.2% expenditure increase. <coughs> What's in the capital improvement section? That's 880,000. Uh, ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, you know those blue things you press to get into a building? We're supposed to have those, we don't at the library in the town hall. Energy management, roof repairs to different buildings. Day one is the building we have down at Fort Williams. The town building itself does not meet code, does not proper egress from that building. Electrical system panels need to be upgraded. Just the routine police crews are replaced. You know the cameras you see on TV when you, you see they, they film some of those things? You know, when the, the police have stopped all those films, all those cameras are now seven or eight years old and need to be replaced. Radar units, everyone loves, wants to make sure that those are working correctly. <laughs> you know, pick up truck, sidewalk, the middle school athletic fields aren't accessible. Uh, the transfer trailer, we, we have all this waste flow, but everyone dumps it in the hopper. Somehow it needs to get over the regional waste system and those things rust out after all. Hazardous materials, road reconstruction, uh, paving, and trying to look at town center, some of the town center traffic issues. The, the budget, the council's not going to be coming up with it. They're having a meeting later. Finance committee, I guess? Finance committee. And when's that in? Uh, Thursday the 22nd. Thursday the 22nd. They're going to have a meeting, and they're going to perhaps tell the school department, perhaps tell the manager that they, would, they want targets for the budget. Uh, I am... Some call it a, uh, I'm on the initiative, on the offensive. Uh, prior to them doing that, to try to lay out some of these issues and to provide a suggestion for their consideration. Who knows? Again, this is manager proposed. This is not council. They certainly have not signed on to it. Uh, 36 cents per thousand valuation increase. A hundred for every hundred thousand dollars in valuation, it should be 36 extra dollars. This, the school's going to be looking at some issues that we'll be hearing over time. This is probably one-fifth of what the total proposed increase would be, roughly a fifth. But it does equate the tax rates now $14.20 per thousand, 36 cents is two and a half percent increase from that. So, you know, if you're, if you're currently paying $10,000 in taxes, which a few people in this town are, you know, their taxes would go up uh, $250 simply to pay for the municipal municipal portion of the budget. I realize this is ambitious, but I go back and look at all those other factors of full value tax rates, municipal full value tax rates, what we're not doing in capital improvements, what we're not doing on salaries, and the fact that, that uh, we need, you know, we really need to take care of our infrastructure. I think this is responsible. To give you a sense of, you know, how the size of this organization as well as the impact of how things happen. We have one person handles payroll, an employee of the school department, Arlene Roquist. She handles it for both the town and the school. We had 992 W-2 forms are being issued this week or next week for 
everyone that was employed by the town of Cape Elizabeth and the Cape Elizabeth School Department this past year. This is everything from referees at basketball games to uh, the superintendent and myself. Uh, you know, full range of, of, of everyone. The school payroll is about 11 million. The town payroll is about 3 million. A 1% increase uh, to cost about 140,000 between the two. So all of this is based on certain goals, 36 cents, certain goals that I believe that we should look at in addition to the council target. One is that we address some of the salary and wages that are below average, particularly for those employees who are receiving good evaluation and who, uh, who need some, uh, who I believe ought to be more fairly compensated. We have collective bargaining agreements with our police and uh, public works unions that need to be honored. I'm calling this $260,000 adjustment in our capital improvement plan is a sensible, realistic, or realistic, sensible capital improvement plan. Someday I'll write something on what the difference is between realistic and sensible. But if you really think about it, you know, I think we've got to be real about our expenses and we need to be sensible about how much we spend. <coughs> I think we need to replace equipment, truck, pickups, and all that without borrowing the money. Does the town citizens have generously approved and appropriately approved, I think, uh, some needed improvements in the school. We incurred quite a bit of debt about the buildings I mentioned, the pool and the lawn, but uh, I think we ought to try to be paying our bills as we go along. So I mentioned earlier personal debt the challenges. The town also needs to be careful on a pay-to-go basis, particularly when we know that these expenses are clearly going to recur every year. We, I don't think we ought to fall behind on just the, just the little odd ends we, we need to buy every year, solve and sand, those, those things make a difference. We, we need, we've been overestimating our revenues the last few years, that's a problem, and contributes to uh, what the possible tax rate is. Uh, citizens aren't going to like a lot of this on first blush, I realize that. But I really wonder, you know, if they'd like it as well, if the needs weren't placed before them, before the town council, so that so that they see what happens if some of these issues aren't funded, uh, if some of these needs aren't funded. You know, just this evening, the wet team responded to a call in, in the city of Portland, provided some mutual aid. <coughs> you know, there are things like that that we may not be able to fund, and I, and I don't want to start with the list already, but. I asked the department heads this morning, you know, this is, we've, we've cut out cleanup weeks. We've cut out family fun day funding. There's no second person in a public works truck anymore. Uh, the council cut, they've eliminated their pay this past year. Out of state conference attendance was, was almost totally cut out of last year's budget. Uh, there really hasn't been room to move. If there's further cuts this year, you know, they, they are going to be things that are even more demonstrably seen by citizens than the lack of the voting machine, than the second cleanup week, than, than some of these other things. There's, there's no area left to cut in terms of streamlining, particularly I think when you look at where we are at stand at being eighth of eight in so many different areas. Finally, I, you know, my goal is to request only what is needed. Uh, just as an aside, this, this picture at the bottom, that is an old people's of a police cruiser, and the person standing there is Neil Williams' father, the current chief of police. Uh, that's a picture that I saw in his office one day and took a picture. And we have advanced a little bit from that cruiser, uh, admittedly, but uh, I'd imagine if we still have it, that would be very valuable and uh, something quite noteworthy. Uh, that's an outline of where we stand. It, it is ambitious, uh, but I do think it's responsible and I, I would like to see at least, I feel responsible as the town manager, to, to put the needs before the council. And you know, I would hope that we can continue to be responsive to citizens uh, with whatever needs they have. Uh, you know, there's over 300 citizens just this evening going over to community services to sign up for different courts. And citizens have very high expectations of the school department. They have very high expectations of, of all the municipal departments. And I think I'm just putting everyone, trying to make everyone aware 
that a tax increase is looming, that if a tax increase is not approved, that, I don't know how we can fall lower than eighth of eight, uh, but at the, at the same time, you know, we, we can fall further, and uh, I think it's time to really look at these issues and to uh, have a community dialogue on what the expectations are. So thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Thank you, Michael. Um, and that really was the point, if I can use that just as a segue. It, we really thought it was important that the community see Michael's presentation. Um, for anyone who didn't do the math, I want to be clear because I'm encouraging people, as Councillor swift Hayata has, to contact us on the website, telephone, mail. Um, let us know what your views are. Um, but Michael laid out a municipal program that would lead to a 2.5% tax increase. That does not include the school. And he also said that was about one-fifth of the total if you assume certain things about the school budget, including uh, another huge cut in state aid. So um, I think clearly um, we will have before us budgets from the school department and the municipal side in excess of a 10% tax increase and so we are encouraging all citizens to let us know what you think about not just taxes but the level of service um, and I think we do have a demanding citizenry and there were 500 people registering over at community services tonight but they did a great job I had a 720 time slot and I was here at 729 um, so we have great employees and we provide a lot of services um, and it's important for people to communicate what they want and how much they're willing to spend. If I could just add, I was at a meeting this morning of um, the town manager and his uh, department heads, and it was, it was, uh, I won't say it was depressing, but it was, it really, it pointed out the, the challenges that not only the citizens face, but that the department heads face. And I would like to emphasize what a good job I think that Cape Elizabeth's municipal government does, just speaking as a town councilor, because that's what I'm most familiar with. Um, these folks are really working hard. You can see that um, from the numbers that were up there, that we get a tremendous bang for our property tax buck from on the municipal side. and. Um, as we do on the school side. And um, I, I just want to thank those folks because they were, even though they're facing some very, very difficult challenges, they are a very professional group and they are doing so in a positive and constructive as possible way. But I think they are stretched quite far right now and it is going to be up to the citizens and the, and the council representing the citizens to express their views um, as to <coughs> what cuts you would like us to make in order to keep taxes down or what services you would like us to keep or expand. Um, but those will all have dollar implications one way or another. So this year, more than ever, we need citizen input to help us make decisions that are good for all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Dr. I wonder if to encourage citizen input on this budget issue, recognizing that it's going to be fraught with a lot of landmines and hard choices for us, if there is a way to increase the budget dialogue presence on the website. I realize that uh, the manager's presentation without his, his oration loses a lot, but there are still quite a few slides that are telling um, and very informative about where we stand in our budget. I wonder if a number of those could be posted and if maybe the website could actually be, there could be a budget section of the website that um, would encourage dialogue to give people an opportunity to do something other than contact all your counselors um, to provide input and comments that can be collected and passed along to us. Oh yes, uh, I'll speak to Wendy and yeah, this is in PowerPoint and I, I, mean, I tried to send the PowerPoint of a version of that to the counselors and some of them had trouble opening it, but we'll, 
with Wendy's, you can usually figure out some way to make it work for a balloon control. Okay, cool. Thank you, Mike. I, I just wanted to say that I uh, did all the remarks that were already made, and tonight's presentation, first of all, the numbers in the presentation are an example of what a good job our previous councils and our town employees have done to keep expenses down over the years, and tonight's presentation is another fine example of what a good job our town manager does in bringing this information to us and to the community. A uh, very professional job, and you know I've been on the council for about seven months now, and I've been extremely impressed at what a great town manager we have. And uh, you know I just hope the public appreciates all the hard work that he and his staff put in. We'd all say ditto to that. I did forget one thing in my presentation that I did want to mention. <laughs> this will be real quick. I want to emphasize, public safety, we were the eighth out of eight. I cannot overemphasize enough the work of our volunteers in the fire department, the, the wet team, the rescue, engine one company and engine two company. I think we're the only community amongst those communities that does not have some full-time presence. Other than the fire chief is the only full-time employee. And as the fire chief said this morning, he could easily ask for you know, a several hundred thousand dollar increase in the budget just for you know, personnel, particularly during the day. And he recognizes that, that he's not going to do that. Uh, it's not quite needed yet because of the work of our volunteers. And, that, you know, in, in so many areas, in the fire company and in the schools and the conservation commission, the planning board, the volunteers, you on the council and the school, from the school board members, it really does, it makes a difference that so many people are willing to uh, give so much of their time as well. Yeah, and, and I often hear, and I, as I'm sure other councilors do, why don't we do more with regionalization and working with other communities? But all you have to do is look at where our figures are versus other communities and see uh, that we stand to lose probably more than we stand to gain by, so, by many regionalization um, efforts because our costs are so much lower than the communities that we could join up with. But yet we do it when it makes sense, like the Willard Station and Engine 1. Okay, well, thank you, Michael. That really was an excellent presentation. Um, next item on the agenda is item 85, which is uh, proposed acceptance of Leighton Farm Road and adjacent farmland. And there's a letter from the um, town engineer in your package. Michael, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I do. Uh, Joel Fitzpatrick is here. Leighton Farms, for those unfamiliar with it, is the former farm of Ralph Leighton at the uh, Wolverine and Wells Road. It's a beautiful new road. It's, I mean, it advise everyone to drive up. It's gorgeous views uh, from uh, the top of the hill looking down back over the marsh and uh, it's going to be a great neighborhood for folks to live. Uh, the open space is real small scale. I apologize that if anyone wants to go look at it, it's shown up on that plan. I would like to mention we, we are going to want one change to the deed. I got a letter from Mike Hill, our attorney, late this afternoon. And I, I haven't discussed this with Joe, but I don't expect it to be any problem. Uh, the open space draft deed does not have a specific uh, permission. It says there's no vehicles allowed on the open space land, but we need a limited exception for the town to be able to use vehicles for maintenance, uh, which, which isn't there, and that's something that uh, we will address. So in the final form, we'll, we'll adopt that. But other than that, I would recommend that you uh, authorize acceptance of the road and the uh, conservation land. Is there a motion? Councilor Fritz, do you have a oh, motion? Um, I have a motion before we... I would move for acceptance of the Leighton Farms Road and the adjacent conservation land. Second. Okay, now... I might make subject to the condition that the manager had put down. Councilor Fritz. It, it seems to me in the letter of December 31st, there's a lot of unfinished um, items here and it seems to me more appropriate that when these things are actually completed that that's when we should um, do the acceptance. I, I want to see that the road and the um, 
uh, erosion control and all of those things are in place before we actually commit to accepting. So I... Um, uh, Manager McGovern raised his hand first, actually. I just wanted to mention, I did get a, an email from Steve Harding today. Uh, first of all, ensuring grass growth, you know, there's nothing we can do about that right now. <laughs> the temporary erosion things we need to continue to have in place, and oftentimes we, we do that, you know, well after acceptance. The drain pipes and catch basins have been cleaned of accumulated sediment. sediment. The emergency spillway at the detention bond has, bond has now been installed since uh, this December 31st letter. Uh, the street light at the end of the cul-de-sac has been installed. Uh, the green belt signs have been installed. I don't know if the space has been caulked between the slope granite curve and he didn't mention that. Uh, and the, the final paving of the roadway is very typical for us. 90% uh, of the time we accept the road, we do hold money in escrow. Uh, because we, we don't want the final paving on the road to put in right away because during construction there's a lot of damage, particularly with the, with the initial work. So it's very typical. We do have money being held, and just I think you better talk to the letter and the estimate. We do have money being held uh, to take care of that. So I, I think your, your point, I, I, Joel Fitzpatrick's aware there was a lot of controversy amongst the staff. Uh, I was the most reluctant acceptor. And, uh, They've worked hard to bring it up to the standards that, that for me to even bring this to you, and I think I think they've done a good job doing it. And you know, if if in fact none of these things had been done, and there wasn't hope that they're going to be done between December 31st and tonight, this would not have been done. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Mall. I was just going to say that again, as uh, our manager said, there is money held back, as was noted in the letter, that and these projects will be done shortly. I'm sure. Councillor yeah. no, Robert. I would add that uh, Fitzpatrick Associates has done a number of projects in town, and Joel has a good track record, so I don't think we need to be overly concerned. Is there any further discussion? Well, it's been moved and seconded to accept the Leighton Farms Road subject to the, um, and the adjacent conservation land subject to the changes that the town manager has just um, raised. All in favor? in favor. And the next item is item 86 and in your package is the town center intersection improvement study. It's been recommended that that be seconded and referred to, I'm sorry, accepted and referred to a workshop. So moved. Second. Okay. Would it be appropriate <coughs> to say receipt of the study? rather than acceptance? That would be fine. Accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Six, seven in favor. And the next item is receipt of a proposal from the Ordinance Committee recommending proposed changes to the traffic ordinance and scheduling of a public hearing on those changes for February 9th, 2004. Councilor Backer. Um, I uh, move that we um, set the proposed uh, changes to the traffic ordinance uh, for public hearing on February 9th, 2004 at the regular town council meeting. Second. Any discussion, Councilor Roberts? Perhaps a question for the town manager now that he's managed to leave. <laughs> <laughs> On section uh, 1338, all-terrain vehicles, uh, indicates that no person shall operate an all-terrain vehicle within the town of Cape Elizabeth upon public land, including park land, et cetera. Um, my concern on that one, that there's nothing in there, and you had just mentioned it about the, the Greenbelt and town vehicles. And I know when, uh, having worked on some of the different trails and stuff in town, we have gotten volunteers to help, help and assist on those projects with all-terrain vehicles to, to haul supplies in. Is that someplace else would allow that, or should that be in there that it would allow certain vehicles for certain uses, all-terrain vehicles? We can take a look at 
between now and the public hearing. Between now and public hearing, fine. And it could be amended at that meeting. It would certainly be in order. Right. Fine. Thank you. That was the only thing I had. Councilor Fritz. I had a question about um, that in 13.24 about limiting parking spaces at the town fire station, police station, and library to only activities in those buildings. And I'm just wondering if that isn't too restrictive. I, I, want, I was wondering the reason for that and whether we can't share parking areas more than that. The ordinance committee looked at that and we'll look at our experience with it over the last few years. The, the intent is, is during the times when those, particularly the library is open, that the library have first preference on that space. The difficulty we've had with the library is we've had, it's because of the, the longitudinal nature of the school, is that folks like to park in the library lot to try to enter the school up at that end, teachers and others, when there's plenty of parking on the school campus for, for the teachers. And, and what happens is then elderly people arrive at the library for a program or whatever during the day, and they complain very loudly that there's no place to park. So what we're, we're trying to do is to preserve the, particularly the library space for library patrons because obviously it just isn't that much space on it. Of course, we had a bigger parking lot and that spot next to the library, that might help to solve this problem. Uh, <laughs> old issue. Uh, and the public safety is, is simply, it's the same issue. Uh, is, you know, we still have, we rely on volunteers 100% to respond to calls. We need to make sure when they arrive for a call, this is a place to park their car. I guess I'm still wondering whether, I mean, this is all the time as it's written here, rather than just daytime. Is that an issue that could be limited, say, to daytime? I don't have the room right in front of me. The intent of the ordinance committee was to all of the time at the public safety building mm -hmm. and in the library at times when the library was open. And the library is open two nights a week. Any further? And We're just setting this up for public hearing. There could be more discussion of the substantive issues after we hear from the public. Some of this is, you know, too, it's focused on giving us the right to put up signs. You know, that, that's the real issue is just to have the right to put up signs in some of these issues to, you know, discourage folks from behavior that, you know, that we'd like to discourage. You know, the police don't have, you know, we don't want them ticketing over there all the time. We'd like to be able to speak to someone who, you know, we, we, we have the ability to check license plates. And if there's a car that doesn't look like, you know, we want to be able to contact that person so you're not supposed to park here during the day. Mm -hmm. I don't see us giving out a whole lot of tickets. We expect to have uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All in favor of receiving the proposed ordinance and setting it up for a public hearing on February 9th. 2004. Three, four, five, six, seven in favor of receipt and public hearing. The next item on the agenda is alewives. Alewives are back. Item 88. Um, there's a recommendation, there's a memo in your package from the town manager and a recommendation that the town manager prepare an alewife harvesting plan. And I don't know, um, David, if you'd like to discuss, if this did go to the ordinance committee. <coughs> and well, I guess it was a determination made that we don't need an ordinance. Well, the ordinance committee didn't make that determination. Um, the town manager has since discovered that we apparently do not need an ordinance, that we can do this one of two ways, either with an ordinance or with, or with by the adoption of a harvesting plan which sounds like it might be administratively easier or more flexible. Um, so and so the town manager is mm -hmm. suggesting that um, he prepare a harvesting plan for us um, in lieu of our adopting an ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, and in light of his report, which I think which is new to all of us, certainly those of us on the ordinance committee, um, I move that we um, 
have the town manager uh, prepare for council consideration an alewives harvesting plan. And I would offer the town manager the assistance of the ordinance committee, if he would like it, in drafting that harvesting plan. I know that Councilors McGinty and Swiss Kayata and I are without work at the moment. <laughs> on, as uh, members of the ordinance committee and we're looking for something to do so if you want us if you'd like our assistance with it we'd be happy to do that i'd be I'll honored to work with you i'm quite certain that was tongue-in-cheek when i asked councillor Backer to serve on the ordinance committee i told him how little work there had been in the last two years and the ordinance committee has met quite frequently this year so. not for lost time yeah, that's right okay so I'll there's a motion. motion and a second any further discussion? All in favor? Seven in favor of an alewife harvesting plan. Okay, item 89 is a report from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission recommending approval of certain uses of Fort Williams Park in 2004. And uh, I'll just read those off. The uh, Multiple Sclerosis Society walk on April 18, 2004, uh, Little League activities for the Little League season, Cape Elizabeth High School graduation on June 6, 2004, Portland Amateur Wireless on June 26 and 27, the Portland Symphony Orchestra on July 2nd, the People's Beach to Beacon Road Race uh, set up and through the race, that would be July 29th through August 1st. The Portland Yacht Club on August 7th and 8th. And the Engine One Art Show on September 5th. The Down East Classic Car Show on September 12th with a rain date of September 19th. And the American Cancer Society Breast Walk on October 17th, 2004. I'll move approval of those uses of Fort William. Second. <coughs> Any further discussion? Councilor Mould. I have a quick question, uh, only partially related to this. Has anyone, have they, has the committee fixed a date for the family fun day yet? No. Okay. Well, when they do that, we'll come before us. Yeah, although, not to beat a dead horse, but there's very limited money available for Family Fund Day, and I think yeah. that might reflect some of the reluctance. There was no money appropriated this year. There was a small carry forward from money that were left from and raised back <coughs> from the public in previous years. So I, I think the committee is still grappling with uh, Family Fund Day. Councilor Backer. I, I note that on the first letter that's in our packet, the letter from uh, the request from the National Multiple, Scler Multiple Sclerosis Society, that the letter has already been signed as accepted by a representative of the town. And I'd like to suggest that you know, as a matter of policy before it's submitted to the council for approval, that if a member of the town is going to sign it, that it be signed as accepted subject to town council approval so that there isn't any possible argument by a group that they, based on sort of a premature acceptance, have taken steps toward an event that we may or may not ultimately permit to be held. I will, I will uh, make sure that doesn't happen, or it does happen as you've you, uh, outlined. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of accepting the report to move states? Five, six, seven. And the next item is a report from the Conservation Commission regarding town-owned lots and you recall we had asked the Conservation Commission to um, share their view with us of um, retention or disposition of town-owned lots and it's been recommended that we receive this report and set it up for a workshop. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Can we do that again? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. Okay, thank you. And the next item is the town manager's capital improvement plan. And again, it has been recommended that we receive that and set that up for workshop. Just to be considered as part of the, the budget process. By the finance, by the finance committee. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven in favor. And oh, I see here the town manager report, which I took out of order, but I think it made more sense to do it while the public was here. So. I won't apologize for that. <laughs> um, the next item, excuse me, Chairman yes. Lynch, could I move that we officially receive that report, even though we sort of already yes. received it, but that we, we may officially make that and refer it to the Finance Committee. And refer it to the Finance Committee for consideration as part of the Finance okay. Committee's budget okay. discussion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Seven. And the next item on the agenda is a um, request to enter executive session to begin the annual evaluation of the town manager. Um, and we generally do do personnel items in executive session. But before we move to that, I'd like to um, just make a note that the town council, as um, was mentioned earlier this evening by Councillor Swift Teata, is meeting in workshop on January 22nd um, to discuss um, municipal and school budget and budget targets. So that workshop will be here in the, I'm sorry. And I just would note, just because it's uh, difficult sometimes for the public to realize we will be meeting for that purpose as the finance committee rather than the That's right, yeah. thank you. Um, and we will meet in the Jordan Conference Room at 7.30 on January 22nd. And I'll just make a note of other workshop dates that we have scheduled as the Finance Committee. Um, March 9th, no, I'm sorry. We have April 1st, April 5th, April 6th, and April 14th. And if necessary, April 28th. And all of those meetings would be at 7.30 in the Jordan Conference Room right behind the chamber. So with that, um, are there any citizens who would like to discuss anything before we vote to go into executive session? Citizens or Boy Scouts? Boy Scouts are citizens. <laughs> I was including that. Awfully shy tonight, aren't they? Okay, well, um, do we have a motion? Well, we will go into executive session. We will um, come out, and if we take any action, we would do that in public, but we will not be televising the rest of the meeting. So um, with that, there is a motion. That's what I'm waiting for. I move that we enter into the executive session for purposes of uh, discussing the town manager's evaluation. Second. Okay, any further discussion? I just, I, uh, you might have no action is contemplated other than adjourning, so. <laughs> that's right. That's I didn't it. think there was any action no, contemplated. No, there's not. But if we were to take any action yeah. with respect to the town manager, <laughs> we would do that in public. I don't want to leave anyone hanging. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Three, four, five, six, seven to go into executive session. Thank you.